Hey guys. I don't know how many people are going to jump on. I just decided out of nowhere to go live, which I never, ever do. Hi. But if anyone's on, um, invite somebody else to come in. Um, I'm just going to be on for just a few moments. Um, just decided to go live. Just decided to, to go live. So um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Hi to everyone. Y'all talk to me. Tell me who you are. Tell me where you're calling from. Tan. I don't know if you're going to stay on, but hi, Tan. Oh, thank you so much, biggest fan. Thank you. I just wanted to come on just to chat for a few minutes. I'm not going to hold you long. Hey, Chris. I'm not going to hold you guys for a long time. If you'd like to invite somebody, invite them because I'm literally going to be on just for a few seconds. This is extremely impromptu. Uh, Delaware is in the house. Greensboro. Tan is so good to see you. Sacramento, Tennessee. Who else? The song you sung encourages me. Thank God. Chicago. Hey, y'all. What is that? Akokeek, Maryland. All right. I never heard of that one. Hey, Jess. Been a fan since calling my name. When y'all say stuff like that, it dates me so badly, okay? It really dates me, and it makes me nervous. <laughs> but I just wanted to come on just for a few minutes, um... I've been going over some notes and I'm, I'm going to leave this up for a little while, but um, I just wanted to come on a few minutes just to encourage some of you, my grow girls. I haven't uh, been on with you guys in a while. The Bronx is in the house. Yes. Are you going to sing for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not one of those that, you know, my sister's really good at the, um, the impromptu singing. I need to be able to holler. <laughs> hey. Okay. I promise I'm not going to be long. Um, I'm just pulling up a scripture that I wanted to just um, reference tonight. Um, but I just had to come on because I have been personally um, dealing with um, just trying to navigate through what we're in and try to navigate through um, this pandemic and, and the results of it and the residuals of it. And, you know, you don't know if it's over. Hi to everybody. Um, you don't know if it's over. You don't know if it's coming back again. You don't know. I mean, everything is up in the air. Everything is up in the air, you know, and, and you guys can talk back to me for the few moments we'll be on. But everything is up in the air. It, it's just crazy. And um, so I just wanted to just encourage us. A lot of people ask me how I um, how I've made it through some of the stuff that I've been through. And many people know that I'm, I'm a single mom and that I've, I'm divorced and I'm raising three children on my own and I minister and I sing and I function in my church. And um, a lot of people ask me, like, how do you juggle all of these things? How do you, you know, get through some of this stuff and still kind of look like you're holding it together? And um, the truth is, looks are deceiving. Somebody say amen. Looks are deceiving. Looks are deceiving. And sometimes, um, you know, we look like we're holding it together, but we're hanging on by a thread. And so um, I just wanted to encourage you tonight about um, balancing the highs and the lows of life. I, I literally wanted to talk about this since Sunday, but I knew it was Labor Day weekend and I knew nobody was going to pay me any attention yesterday. And so I decided to wait till today and then I was going to do it later on tonight. And then I said, no, I'm going to do it on Friday. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to jump on right now because it's literally been in my spirit since Sunday. And um, I, I went to the city and I had dinner, you know, by myself. 
and um, just was thinking and God was just really um, speaking word and leading me to the scripture and encouraging me. And I said, I I have to encourage somebody else in this. So uh, just for a few moments, I'm going to talk about balancing the highs and the lows of life, balancing the ups and the downs, balancing the roller coaster of life. It, it, it's just crazy how we went into this year like on the perfect vision, you know, bandwagon. We went in, you know, God is going to show us. God is going to give us perfect vision. We're going to see everything that God promised us. And then, bam, stuck in the house, quarantined. And I know you've heard it over and over again, but if that's not a roller coaster, I don't know what is to come in with such expectation and literally not even halfway through the year to get kind of knocked all the way back down to nothing. Like not even knocked all the way back, like knocked down, just totally knocked down. And, um, you know, it's just been really a crazy roller coaster for me. And so um, as I was reflecting on everything that's been happening, everything that's been going on. Um, God led me to Philippians 4 and 1. I mean, Philippians 4 and 11. And I'm just going to read. You know, I try to, uh, my best to balance my, Pastor Moore, I love you. Um, I I try my best to balance my emotions. And... um, this, this I've learned over life that this is not just a woman thing, that emotions that men can have some unbalanced emotions as well. And um, I know y'all don't want to be honest about it, but some of the brothers can have unbalanced emotions as well. And, you know, life is just going to hit us with things that take us on that roller coaster. But I am so encouraged that God already made provisions for everything that was going to happen to us. He, he literally already made provisions because he knew, as a matter of fact, he predestined it. He preordained even some of the craziness that has happened in our lives. So Philippians um, 4 says, and I'm going to read it in the King James, and now I'm going to go back in the Message Bible, but um, it says, for I rejoice, this is 10, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last you care of me. Where it, no, I want to start at 11. 11, not that I speak in respect of want, For I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. I have learned. And that that literally knocked me because what it says is you have to experience discontent in order to learn to be content. There's no way to learn something without without the application of it, without the 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 teaching of it. And you learn through experience. You are taught through experience. And so we have to learn contentment by being put in a place of because you can't learn to be content just being in a place of contentment. Or, or being in a good place or being in a comfortable place. The only way to learn how to be content in discontentment is to be put in a position where things are uncomfortable. It's the only way to learn. It's the only way to learn it. And so he said, I've learned to be content in whatever state I find myself in. I know both. I learned And and because I learned, now I know. Because I learned, now I know. Content. Look, Pastor Moore is amazing. Y'all need to go. He teaches. He teaches good. He teaches well. Amen. But um, I know because I've learned. I know that's what Paul said. I know because I, I know both how to be a base and how to be a bound. I know how to be full 
and I know how to be hungry. I know how to be abound, have plenty, and I know how to suffer need. And so what, what it says is that we have to learn how to be full. We got to learn how to be hungry. How do you learn to be full? Th that means that there is a way to be full and there is a way to be hungry. And the truth is there's temptation in both places. E each one of those things come with their own temptation. Each one, it's, it's, uh, exactly. It's the same. Listen, and before it's over, we're going to be able to apply this to every area of our life. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to break it down in just a few seconds. We're going to be able to apply this in every area of our lives. There is a way to be full and there's a way to be hungry. There's a way to be empty. There's a way to be abased. There's a way to be abound. There's a way to be up. And there's a way to be down. And the truth of the matter is you, the temptation with both, the temptation with being high or being uh, good or being comfortable or being in a season where you've got plenty is that you got to stay humble. That that that's the key when you are high is to be humble. And the truth is there is a temptation when we are comfortable when we are we are in a good season, when we are in a flourishing season, there's a temptation to walk away from God. There's a temptation not just to walk away from him, not not even that deep, but there's a temptation to forget. There's a temptation to be lax in God, but there's a way to be high and the way to be high is the same way to be hum to be low. And that is to be humble. That is to be humble. It means we have to know how to handle the lows. We have to know how to handle the highs because the truth is height doesn't last forever. Height doesn't last forever. Everything that's high has got to come down. And when you're high, when your season is in, when it's your time, when it's your turn and you're flourishing and you're growing and you're moving forward. You got to know that everything that's up has to come down eventually. And that's not a negative thing. It's what God. This is what Paul said. I learned how to do both because I realized there's going to be times when I'm going to be the head of the church and people are going to be joining and, and saints are going to be coming. And then there's going to be a time when I'm in prison and I got to still learn how to praise God just as hard in the prison as I did in the pulpit. And so there is a way, you know, there, there's a way to be high. Everything high has got to come down. And so when I'm in my full season, I'm humbled because I understand it's not going to last always. If we're talking about it in, in the, in terms of finances, when I'm in my full season, I'm not spending everything that I have. And that's a lesson we all have to learn. It's not something that always comes natural to us as humans. Doesn't always come natural to us. Sometimes you got to learn how to manage your money in high seasons. And you don't really learn how to manage money until you get a whole lot of it. Because if you always got now, some people can manage a little bit. And if you can learn it, it, there's lessons on both level levels. If you can learn to manage when you got a little, he said, that if you be faithful over a few things, I can make you ruler. It qualifies you to be ruler over many because if I can manage whatever God has given me, whatever God has given me, whether it's a lot or whether it's a little, if I can manage it, when I'm in my high season, I don't spend everything that I have. I put some away. Because I understand that I'm not always going to be in this high season, that there's going to come a time where I'm in a low when I'm in a low season. I'm, I, Lord, I thank you for where I am. It's not where I want to be. 
but I thank you for where I am. I'm content. And and so we have to learn how to be abound. We have to and it's a learning process. It's a learning process. It is also a grace that is given by God. It is also a grace to condition ourselves in every situation. It's a grace to be, I I got notes here, it's a grace to even be even tempered through the various phases of life. And that's what I really wanted to get at is emotional balance. Emotional balance. Y'all talk back to me. I'm a. I'm gonna. Um. I'm a. I'm gonna have a few people ask me some questions. But um. And y'all invite somebody. Send to tell somebody come in. Um. There has to be emotional balance, and the emotional balance comes in where I get the grace to function in whatever season I'm in. Paul said. I, I, I'm grateful when I've got a lot and I'm grateful when I've got a little, I'm good when I have a lot and I'm good when I have a little, my temper is even because I have the grace to handle whatever season I'm in. And again, I told y'all, some people ask me, you know, how do you function through this? How do you keep it together through that? And I believe that God has given me the grace. It's something that I've asked for, for wisdom to operate in the seasons that I've been in in my life, because I didn't always want to be even tempered. Who be honest? I didn't always want. I, oh, there were many times, 90 percent of the time I had something to say. of the time I had something to say that would cut to the core. I had something to say that would have cut straight to the bone, to the white knee, to the white knee. But I got the grace. God gave me the grace to handle the season that conditioned me. And the truth is, it's not till you go through certain things that you acquire the grace. It's not till you go through certain things that you learn to be full and you learn to be hungry and you learn to be up and you learn to be down. Not that our emotions don't take us there sometime, not that we don't feel lonely, not that we don't feel worried. The, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. It didn't say we wouldn't feel the emotion of fear or of doubt or of worry. The sin is not in feeling the emotion. The sin is lingering there long enough for it to become a spirit. You can't let this stuff become a spirit of fear and a spirit of doubt because spirits attach themselves. Emotions and feelings come and go. And so when you get, when you feel the feeling of fear, you got to rebuke it. You got to speak to it. The devil is a liar. When you feel the spirit of doubt and worry come on you, you've got to shut those things down so that you can even your temper. So you can even your temper. We are in a crazy time. People are going through financial difficulties. People are worried. I'm concerned about my children in school. I'm not there with them. They go every other day and I'm not there with them. They're too old to be to stay home. You know, I said, I've got to be able to trust them to go out there, to to be accountable, to wear their masks, to to social distance in school, to follow the rules. They're old enough to do that. You know, they're not babies. And some people have babies. And I I feel so bad for some of the ladies and, and families that have little, little babies that can't go to school or or it's just, you know, it's just crazy. You know, you, you're you're torn, you know, between what you should do. And so we're in a, a just between the social injustice and the economic crisis and all that is going the health crisis. We are on a roller coaster because one day the numbers are coming down. The next day, the numbers are going up. 
And you don't know what the fall is going to bring. And you don't know what the winter is going to bring. And are the schools going to stay open or are they going to close? Is your job going to open back up? Are you going to get a job, you know, once all of this is over? You know, and so it's a roller coaster. But God has given us the grace to handle the season that we are in. And the word, oh my God, y'all, I'm telling you, I was walking through the city Sunday and God led me to this text and it calmed my spirit. It calmed my spirit, you know, and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm in a low season and I'm not, you know, I try to be transparent, you know, um, and I've learned how to do that, that that was also a learning process, you know, and thank God for the learning curve. But that was also a learning process because I don't always find it, you know, comfortable to be transparent. But um, I, I'm in low season. I don't know what's next. I don't know how to move. I'm, I'm, I'm trying some new things and trying some other stuff to see, you know, wh- what the next step is going to be. And somebody say, oh, girl, you didn't pray. Girl, you didn't fast. And you didn't lay before the Lord to find out what your next season is. But the truth is, sometimes God is silent. And sometimes God is waiting for you to move on things that he told you to do years ago that you still haven't put in place. So everything is not, you know, everything is not. We put so much on God when he's already done enough. He never does anything else. He's already done enough. enough. And some of us just have to move. Some of us have to move on some things, some uncomfortable places, some uncomfortable seasons. Um, and you have to get out of your feelings. I'm, I'm getting ready to leave it alone because I feel you got to get out of. That's what this is. That's what I'm going to call this. Um, when this is over, I'm going to label this get out your feelings. Get out your feelings. Balance yourself. Do not. Go on the emotional roller coaster. Get out of your feelings. Get into the word. Even your temper. Ask God to give you the grace to be content in the season that you are in. Be content in this. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is helping somebody. Hey, Tiff, I hope this is helping somebody. Get out of your feelings and be content Not complacent, not complacent, content, because you know that God is in it. Not complacent, not lazy, not lackadaisical, okay? Because I'm, I'm emotionally content, but I'm looking for God, what is the next move? Let me let me let me put this in place. Let me put that in place. Do I need to go back to school? Do I need to, you know, do I need to work on a certification? Do I need to be looking for another job field? Not just sitting doing nothing. That's not what content means. It doesn't mean that I'm sitting doing nothing. It means that I'm spiritually resting in what God is doing in my life. That I'm not up in arms because I don't have everything that I had before. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not up in arms because my bank account is low. I'm not up in arms because, you know, I, I don't have everything that I, that I thought that I was going to get the beginning of this year. Mm-mm. I'm content. God, you have me where you have me for a reason. Now, I'm going to pray about this next move I'm getting ready to make. And I I pray that you're in it. If you're not in it, it's not going to work. If you're not in it, it's not going to work. And then I'm going to be all right with that. Because we get so disappointed by stuff that doesn't work. We get so disappointed. By relationship, I told you, y'all can apply this to every area of your life, whether it's financial, whether it's relationships. And that's 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 really, you know, I was thinking about the relationship side of it because I'm a pretty, you know, at this point in my life, y'all. I don't I don't get too emotionally. um, Discouraged over relationships. And you know why? 
it's because I've learned. <laughs> I've learned how to be content. And I learned because there were very high relationships, emotional times in my life where my, rela- my love life was just amazing. And then there were extreme lows. And guess what? The kids still needed to eat. The bills still needed to get paid, still had to get up and go to work, still had to leave worship, still had to preach, still had to pay the, the, the mortgage. What? Nothing ain't stopping because your work, your your love life came crashing down. Your boss don't care nothing about your love life. The bank don't care nothing about your love life. Your insurance company don't care nothing about your love life. None of that stops. You got to learn how to be even tempered. You got to learn how to be able to function when everything is not right. I've learned. I have learned. And I know now I'm a woman of a certain age. And I won't say what it is. Y'all will have to do your own research. I'm a woman of a certain age. And I just feel like I've been through too much to not have learned something. I had to have learned something in this season where I am now. I've got to be able to look back over my life and say, "Mm -mm, I saw that five years ago. I saw that 10 years ago. Mm -mm. I've been to the show and I've seen the strings. And when you've seen the strings, yes, Sheree, we've learned, honey. When you've seen the strings, when you know that the puppet has a master, when you know that the puppet has a master and the master is pulling the strings, my God, you can, oh, no, no, no. I, I'm not going up on that roller coaster. And I'm not going down. I'm going to stay right here where I'm at. And whatever's going on around me will eventually have to concede to where I am. I promise y'all. I promise you. What's going on around you will have to come under subjection. Because if you keep going with it, when it's up, when it's down, when it's out, when it's in, You got to stay right here. You got to stay right here. You got to trust God. You got to believe God. You got to stand on his word. And things around you will start to obey what you're putting into the atmosphere. It will start to become conducive to what you're putting into the atmosphere. And so I I just, you know, again, that's for relationships. That is for financial purposes. That is for friendship. I mean, you can apply it to every area of your life. This situation up to your health, this situation that we're in right now. God is looking for people that'll stay even temper. Paul went through a myriad of situations. And that's what life is. It's episode after episode, season after season. I just watched Power with my son the other day. This season is not, it's not doing it for me. It's not doing it for me. The last season, bomb. Season before, I I remember when I didn't know what power was. I sat down and watched about three seasons back to back. And they were all good. And now we're at a season where I don't know what y'all doing. Not sure. So every season is not going to be. But that's what life is. It's season after season. It's episode after episode. And you need every episode in order to get to the next season. There's no episode that can be eliminated. If you if you go from episode one to episode three, you miss something. And you so you can try to cut episodes out if you want to. 
But you got to go through every episode in order to get to the next season. Even the ones we don't like. Even the ones where Jane, ghosts, ghosts get killed, we don't like it. Ghost is dead. Tariq is not, he's not ghost. Where is Tommy? Okay? So every season is not, every episode is not going to be our favorite. But it is a vehicle to the next season. And so we got to be content in the episode that we don't like. So that we can get to the season where everything is all right. Okay. So I I I, I mean that that's what again I came out of Philippians 4. That was um it was burning on me since Sunday. It was burning on me since Sunday. And um I was gonna do a little video and blah 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 blah. So I hope that this blessed somebody tonight. Y'all can ask me something if you want to. Tiff, I know I know you're talking about um um Tommy. Where's Tommy? It's just that kind of episode. It's just that kind of episode. Okay. So, you know, I want you guys to be encouraged. Be encouraged, okay? Be encouraged to stay even-tempered in this season. Don't allow yourself to go on the roller coaster of emotions, okay? Trust in God. Learn how to be in the season you're in. Learn the season you're in. Learn the season you're in. Because the truth is, it's going to come back around again. It's going to come back around. Bishop preached on Sunday. Oh, goodness. Now it's going to get away from me. Oh, it was Harvest Sunday. It was Harvest Sunday. And, um, oh, goodness. What was the text? It was Harvest Sunday. Somebody know the text. What was the text? I can't think of it. But basically, what, what it was saying is that God has cycles. God deals in, in it's, it's got to come back around. It's got to come back around. As long, that's this text, as long as the earth remaineth, there will be seed time. Thank you, Tish. And harvest. As long as the earth remains, the people were even if the people were in a flood, the people were dealing with all kind of calamities. He said, "Mm -mm. as long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and there is going to be harvest. There's going to be a time to sow and there's going to be a time to grow. There's going to be seed time and there's going to be harvest. So God's cycle is not going to stop because of what's going on in the world. Mm -mm. His cycle has got to continue. Don't y'all be fooled by what's happening in the government, by what's happening. I, I mean, don't be fooled by it. As long as the earth remains, God is still in control. And there's got to be seed time and there's got to be a harvest. Your season is going to change. You've got to learn how to be where you are. Learn how to be in a seed time season. Because there's a season in your life where you will just need to sow. There is a season in your life where you will just need to sow. And it'll look like you're putting out more than you're getting in. But because there's got to be harvest, there's going to come a time in your life where you just keep on getting. And no matter how much you give, you just can't give enough because it just keeps coming back to you. Because God's cycle is not going to stop because of what's going on in the world. So I just want you to be encouraged. There's some people, you know what, you know just fell. There are some people that are blessed in the middle of this, of this COVID. There are some people that are being blessed right now. There are some people that are getting stuff they never thought they would get right now in the middle of a pandemic. 
That's why you can't hate on nobody because you, you struggling. You praise God with the people that are getting something. Praise God with the people that are, that are flourishing in the pandemic. It's all right. It's okay. Cause we're not all going to be flourishing at the same time, but I promise you your time is coming. And if you can be content where you are, you're going to see God move you into your season. You're going to see God do it. So I encourage you to keep your emotional balance, to stay, to stay even tempered, to ask God for the grace to be content where you are and to give you the grace to wait until your season turns. I love y'all. Anybody want to ask something? All your seed needs is a little time. That's what Bishop said. Oh my goodness. Okay, you know what that means, right? That means hold it. I was trying to ch- at the same time. But that just means hold it. Jess? I love y'all. I didn't plan to be on this long. My father is on with Dr. Todd Wall. And so I'm going to have to get off because he's going to be looking for me over there. But I I just had to get on and I had to um, just try to encourage you um, in what God encouraged me in. Again, this can go for every area of your life, every area of your life, every area. Don't let the enemy bamboozle you. And play on your emotions. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you, Jess, Tiff, Naquan. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I really pray that you were blessed. I really pray that you were blessed. You can share this. um, Share it with someone. Um... Tan, I love you. I cannot wait to get to L.A. It's been so long. I need to travel so bad. I'm like, I need towels for my house. I need to go to a hotel. Don't tell nobody I said that. (laughs) Oh, goodness. But um, I am, I'm going to go so that I can uh, go over to Dr. Hall. And um, my dad on the fireside chat on Facebook. All right. I love y'all. Don't laugh at me. Who is sexy, juicy? It was an excellent plug. I'm on live, you know. I know. You just plug. Grab a stick. Oh. (laughs) That's my son. That's how you're supposed to plug. (laughs) I love y'all. And, um... I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I love you, Ed. (laughs) You sound like Uncle Kitty. Uh, I love y'all. Good night. Good night.